to the vlog. Today I want to cover the whole Intel processor problem where Microsoft, Apple and pretty much everybody else, Google included, are all caught up in something and I want to go over the basics as to what we can infer and why. So let's start with the basics. So the basics are that computers run on processors and we've known for quite some time because of you know, Intel's own Moore, Gordon Moore, you know, Moore's law says that things are supposed to get doubly faster every two years. Now, whilst that's not strictly been true, it's been approximately true for most of the time. And then in more recent years, what happened was the processors didn't get twice as fast. What happened was they ended up packing in twice the number of cores that gave the impression that they were getting twice as fast. So a lot of work has been put into making these processors faster, especially at competing companies such as ARM uh, and with other manufacturers such as Qualcomm. What they came up with with those processors was something that is A, good at being power efficient, B, very, very fast at what it does, C, brilliantly suitable for mobile and in a large part if it wasn't for ARM then we wouldn't have the smartphone capabilities and tablet capabilities and even smart watches and other wearables we wouldn't have those capabilities and technology because there is no way that you could really do this on an Intel processor. Now this is where the problems start to happen because if you take a mobile computer such as a laptop what you need is something that's good with a battery, you need something that's very, very fast, uh, you need something that doesn't you know, give off a lot of heat or create thermal problems. So basically what they're really looking for in a laptop is what they've already got in the smartphones. Now, this is a problem. For a number of years now, and you know, this is really a topic for another day, Windows has already been largely ported away from Intel processors and you know we first saw this with the Windows RT and the same thing has also largely happened with Apple because iOS is largely built on the same Unix foundations and the same frameworks as what Mac OS was built on so whereas Mac OS runs on Intel iOS is still largely the same code it has been recompiled to work on the iPhone which is an ARM processor so a lot of the groundwork is already in place and you know if you go to places like Google for instance you will also see that they have as well as Intel they're compiling down to ARM as well. So this then leaves you with the question well if everything is ready to switch away from Intel number one why and number two uh, why haven't we done this already? So to answer the first question of why uh, a lot of the existing software that you already run has only been compiled to run on the Intel processors. So you take something like PaintShop Pro, for instance, or you take any anything basically that you use that is not Microsoft uh, uh, written, the chances are that the developers of the software that you use, they've only compiled to run on Intel, which means it runs on Intel and it runs on AMD. And AMD is something that we're gonna cover another day. So. Getting back to the Intel problem, uh, you know, we know that stuff is already written to run on Intel only, which means that anybody that is targeting that platform would have to recompile to run on ARM. And that's actually not as difficult now with modern compilers and development environments as a lot of people might think. The problem comes down to when you've got those software rely on other pieces of software written by other people. That's where the problem starts. So those people then have to rewrite uh, and recompile to work on an ARM processor. And if they rely on anybody else, then all of those parts, and the next thing you know, you've got a big tree of dependencies that all have to be recompiled to run on ARM. For a lot of open source software, this is already not a problem because they wrote their software to run on all processors at the beginning. So <laughs> yeah, things like Unix and all of its uh, sub programs and dependencies that it comes with, those already work. Now, to answer the second part, why haven't we jumped over already? Microsoft did try this a couple of years ago with their WinRT, as I mentioned just now, and I 
can't remember if I've already covered this or not, but uh, you know, the 30 second version is that they rewrote Windows to run on an ARM processor. It did run on an ARM processor and Windows RT was released. The WinRT runtime, which is underneath Windows RT, uh, you know, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. However, it had a problem. And that is third parties didn't update their software to run on the WinRT runtime, which basically meant that if you bought the Surface RT, which was the first computer that came out with an ARM-based version of Windows that I remember, uh, you basically couldn't run any third party software, which was fine by me because Office ran on it. And also I could run my own software on it because I have the source code, I could just compile it for Windows RT and bingo, it ran. So this is really where we're at. <laughs> so knowing that all of these things are in place and also knowing that Intel has not kept up pace with people like AMD, is definitely not keeping up with any of the ARM manufacturers, is nowhere close now to what some of the mobile phones are doing. Well, the logical conclusion is that we should be seeing laptops come out very, very soon again on Windows, back on ARM, and also on the other side, you'd have the Apple uh, ecosystem move over to ARM. Now, if you're too young to remember, Apple already shifted its ecosystem not that long ago in the bigger scheme of things. It was probably about 10, 12 years ago that they moved away from the older processors, which were known as the PowerPC processors, and they moved over to strictly Intel processors. So everything got recompiled and, you know, bingo, it was up and running and very quickly the ecosystem moved along with it. For a while, there was a, uh, a layer that sat in the middle called Carbon, which basically allowed stuff from the past to run on the new uh, uh, processors. And for the longest time, that actually worked perfectly well. You know, people were happy with it and probably around, I would say, just after Snow Leopard, maybe, uh, yeah, I think it would have been around Snow Leopard. They started to phase out Carbon so that you were left with just 64-bit Intel processors. The chances are, if Apple's going to move over again, this time it's going to be an Apple chip that goes in. I mean, Apple's already producing their own chips for the watch, the iPads, the iPhones, the motion co-processors, the uh, touch bar in the MacBook Pro, the, uh, what was the, the new one they've just put in the latest AirPods? It was like the H1, I think it was. Uh, no, H1 was in the first AirPods. There's a, there's a new one that's in the um, uh, AirPod redesign. Anyway, the long and short of it is, Things will move over at some point, and it might be sooner than people expect, or it could be another year. I mean, I don't know the answer to this one, but I, I, if, I, if I was a betting man, I would say it was coming soon. So knowing that is the case, that will then also push the, um, the pressure back onto the Microsoft side. And the one thing that everybody knows on the Windows side is that, you know, if you're gonna have a mobile premium device, then you need to have really, really good uh, battery management, um, you know, efficiency, you need to have speed when you need it and the ability to throttle it down when you don't need it. You don't need a big hungry Intel processor that is uh, zapping a lot of power even when it's doing nothing. Which, you know, it's counterintuitive, but that's because they're using old architecture that was originally written for mains driven computers and whilst they have made some changes such as you can turn off certain cores and you can do uh, certain things with it that the old processors never used to be able to do, it's still nowhere close to what an ARM processor will do. So that's what I wanted to cover today. It's really a case of you know, when you understand what the bigger picture is and what the problems are, and you question, well, why aren't we moving over? The answer literally is we are moving over. The process, whether you like it or not, or knew about it or not, has already started, and it's been going on for quite some time. It's just that now it's getting very close to the point where the, the consumer is going to start to see this. And uh, yeah, that's really what I wanted to say today. Anyway, if you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and I will speak to you soon.